In this week's episode, I'm talking to my friend and the other part of sourcing challenge, Aaron Lins from ThoughtWorks in the US about how he got into sourcing, his view on what tools to use, and sourcing on conference apps. Welcome to episode 19 of the Sourcing Challenge. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. I started the interview off with Aaron by asking how he got into sourcing. Good question. So it's not as long as it looked by the gray beard. Actually, so Facebook, just the other day, I got um, a picture, you know, those reminder pictures of like, where were you? And it was seven years ago. Um, this month, I was at Sherm, and I'm posing with Sean Connery, wax uh, Sean Connery, at the at the Madame Curie's in in Las Vegas. And uh, at the time, I was presenting at a booth, um, so I was the booth sales guy in the suit, um, and I was trying my hardest to get into recruiting. I was selling. Um, software, an applicant tracking system, onboarding. Um, and what it was was a technology company that did the ATS as a way to sell background checks and drug tests. And uh, prior to that company, I had worked in HR. At, uh, I did a small stint at IBM in shared services. And then I worked for another company called HR Direct. I think they've become, um, changed a couple names, but um, boring compliance, labor law, OSHA, paperwork. And I would sit through and learn all there was to know about it. And it was um, smiling and dialing. It was picking up the phone and calling outbound um, to get leads. And this technology, again, seven years ago, uh, Twitter came out and LinkedIn was more prevalent. And it was about your company's page and about you know how you mess. So, I got to um, realize that there wasn't anybody in digital marketing at the time, and I wanted to get into this space. So I, you know, told my boss I really want to take over and start a Twitter account and, and uh, improve our branding. And um, so I really growth hacked the heck out of it. Um, I think I had at some point like sixteen Twitter accounts um, that were all <laughs> each niche, um, you know. Uh, every we, we did really well with automotive dealerships and uh, motor vehicle um, lorry trucking drive truck driving associations and and um, uh, you you name it anyone who could use those kinds of things and I ended up actually selling pretty well with the technology um, and and I just realized you know I'm doing the back end of this um, and on the my part time I was doing a little bit of recruiting ended up um, working for a recruitment company for, for a bit afterwards and really just learning the business from scratch. And, you know, the job boards were the, the name of the game at the time. And, you know, our own internal ATS, it was pretty, you know, it was what, what it was for the day. But, you know, as an agency, it was a small um, business, but it was um, very niche. I was looking for um, aerospace engineers, <laughs> aer aerospace mechanics. Um, once I filled those, you know, the, the basic, you know, CAD designers, then I got into, I got the, the sheet from, from Pratt and Whitney and Secours Thermodyne and a lot of other, I saw the markup on the higher niche ones was greater. So I said, uh, let's learn fluid dynamic, take on some of these really hard roles because we can make some money off of them. You know, I just was the nerd who sat there, uh, Wikipedia on one tab and, you know, the, the browser and the other, just looking up keywords to try to find people and talking to them about contract jobs that we had access to and um, filled some really, really niche ones and earned a lot of trust with the managers there and, um, you know, became a decent part of that company and uh, fell in love with it. A lot of people that I've talked to and a lot of people at this show as well, you've been a big influence to them about how they actually learned and who they're picking up tricks from and reading your article. Where did you learn? Like, who did you read? And where did you pick up a lot of the, the kind of things that people just associate with you now? It probably predates me learning recruiting because I was trying to sell this, this like I said, ATS and, and all these services that we had. I got into influencer marketing and trying to find who are the thought leaders in recruitment. I, I knew who those HR people were, but then there were these recruiter people, the Irina Shamaivas, Glenn Cathy's, you know, Guttmacher, and a couple of these just, you know, I think I called them recently, somebody like Mount Rushmore of uh, 
of, of people who really, you know, Shally and, and some of those folks that were really there from the start, uh, establishing this as a niche and where recruiting was maybe less interesting to me. Um, you know, I always thought that just, that's automatic. You know, you're just talking to people, just treat them the way you would expect to be treated. But the, the geeky part in me said, oh, you know, finding them and getting to know where to look for them in the first place, that's the challenge. Let's, uh, and yeah, it was just uh, getting involved in that market from that standpoint. And like I said, I was, you know, playing around with some black hat stuff. You know, you, you don't learn how to uh, set up 16 Twitter accounts or whatever, automatically, uh, you know, how to, how to growth hack those things, how to uh, get your SEO up, how to get some .edu email addresses so you can build backlinks, you know. It, so it's just becoming how do you strategize around that. Uh, also started to build some microsites. So I was building with WordPress at the time and I ended up owning almost 200 domains <laughs> and running all this, you know, fake SEO stuff and uh, blogs. I think the, 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 the stupidest accomplishment, if there is one, with the Twitter accounts for the, the Motor Vehicle Association, I got liked and, and friended by the, the head of the US Department of Transportation. Um, <laughs> but my totally fake account that was just talking about, you know, motor vehicle safety issues and, and uh, the licensing requirements and going through all the state laws, learned how to make my own RSS feeds so I could, you know, run things through and reword, you know, other people's content. So yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I think I learned probably everything the wrong way. The stuff that you would never tell somebody today to try and do, but it taught me a lot of the behind the scenes of how the web works, how the, how does XML feeds work, how do you connect the dots between the content that you want to share and, you know, keeping an audience engaged. You know, you don't want to be, uh, at the time I was, we had almost very, you know, very little authentic content of our own, but uh, so it was repurposing other people's content. And yet, you know, we, we were able to sprinkle in our own, build a lot of traction. And, uh, you know, the company did sell for quite a bit more than, than I got paid out of it. But, uh, you know, it was, the end result was um, I did actually have a couple of very happy clients. You know, we had a good product, but it was just about you know, marketing it. I mean, in terms of tools, you're probably the one that people actually look for when they're looking for tools or what's going on in the tools. What, what do you work with today? Like what's your kind of sourcing tools um, stack look like today? You know, I've, I've been trying to, to wean it down actually. It's, I think there's an over-reliance on tools in general from an email system um, uh, using Lemlist uh, from a company standpoint. I've, we've looked at some other tools. I mean, it, it just it depends on the technology going back to days when, when I actually was spamming for other people and other communities, just uh, learning how I could actually do that on my own. I mean, you can you can do almost everything yourself manually now, but there's so many APIs and tools that are available. On a personal level, I use uh, Full Contact. I've always been a fan of theirs, for better or worse, does, I, I think, a good job. The uh, JSON stuff, Postman is still my go-to but I'm actually starting to use it just within the browser. There's Chrome extensions that will let you change the perception that you're coming from an iPad instead of from a browser. There's other ones that will change the cookies or change the resolution on the screen. So you can do a number of things just within the browser. I'm starting to go more towards that because I think it's the Swiss Army knife approach where you have Chrome extension for everything. You just, uh, you know, obviously don't need to leave them open all the time. What's something that you're working on now or that you have been working on that, that you're excited about? Well, you know, I've, I've also spent a lot of time recently with the conference uh, work and uh, I'm, I'm working more on, again, how to, how to make that simple as possible. So... Uh, eliminating some of the tools in the process without code. I think I got famous for telling people that uh, you should have a, a burner cell phone um, <laughs> because it's amazing. Actually, I went and just signed up, uh, even though I, my email didn't work, to RecFest because I think that starts uh, next week. Yep. And uh, got in there, and it, it, the first thing when I turned it on, it asked, do I want to turn on beacons, which means do I want to turn on my Bluetooth? so that my data will be shared with anybody who's in the room who paid money to have a beacon <laughs> attached to this app, which is, which is a little scary. 
um, I found another conference tool that almost explicitly was built with the purpose of retargeting advertisements. So within the conference app itself, they were logging your Facebook pixels and doing other things. At the very least, I'll say that the RecFest one um, asked if I was part of the European Union and made me check a box if I wanted to read about the, the, the privacy uh, uh, by the same token. I uh, wasn't able to get all the attendees, but I was able to get everything else <laughs> with um, very minimal effort, no cookies required, just the right path to uh, what looks like a Heroku storage <laughs> space. <laughs> so uh, not to not to make fun of anybody, but you know everything was linked to uh, an Amazon S3 account that if you just link to it, you could get all the data. So that's not compliant. To, to not talk about like uh, none privacy, uh, the evil GDPR thing, the data is truly so easy to find. And I think uh, others were playing with access to Trello boards that are publicly available. Boy, that's embarrassing. I mean, there's some people who have shared very confidential information over uh, Trello, just assuming it's not being indexed. And that's a, that's a false assumption. So that's one of those examples that goes back to original sourcing was if you knew how to look for an Excel sheet or you knew how to look for the right keyword to look for attendee list or um, emergency contact is just a keyword. You'd find very interesting details uh, that are, you know, now it's OSINT or something more heavily uh, thought of as a security concern, which again is, is probably a good thing. Um, it just means for us, um, we have to be a little bit more stealthy or we have to just look and find new ways to uncover information that was much easier to find in the past. And if you had unlimited amount of time, what would be the kind of thing that you would look into next? It's interesting. I mean, I, I know um, I have I've played around a little bit with AngelList. I, I don't know if that's outside of um, US as big, but um, I'm seeing a lot of tech companies, a lot of obviously it was set up for angel investors. Um, to find these startup companies that um, some of them are in stealth mode and you know you go to the website and it's a one pager but um, you look at who these people are they're ex you know this company or that company they're engineers with 10 years experience here uh, your computer vision or whatever and you go man these are the people who this is going to be the next Google or Amazon if everything falls in perfect and you go um, those those are the companies that um, have the the maximum potential. They they're nowhere close to peaking, and and so um, there's definitely a market for that. I also see um, self learning um, methods, the way people can learn code without having to go to school, um, is amazing technology, and it's amazing people. The, the the dedication to after you've worked your nine to five to teach yourself a new programming language or, or learn to improve yourself. Um, th those are people that I think when we talk about, we, we want to hire aspirational people or people who um, won't take no for an answer. Um, when we talk about culture and we don't talk about skills, those are the people, right? Those are the people that you say, yeah, I want to hire people like that. However, it's, it's the, in, in real life, I'm not seeing it. I see a lot of companies that uh, still say uh, a college degree and you know five years experience and you know, well, what about Coursera and they go what's that <laughs> you know uh, that's not you know those people are going to small companies and startups or they're or they're being pushed out of the market so I, I wonder if we can do a better job with helping those people to meet the the, the gap in employment that we're seeing right now I'm not saying gap so much as um, you know the opportunity that we're missing out on companies aren't looking are looking past um, these people because they don't have a training budget or they don't know how to do mentorship properly and again those are massive scale problems but they can't say that talented people aren't out there maybe they need the right coaxing maybe they need a year to get to full speed but the potential and the energy and the and the enthusiasm is there that's where the greatest opportunity is not replacing people with machines or ai it's more people filling those voids within the industry we've become famous for what i call conference sourcing how did you think of that and how did you i know you've been working on it for some years but how did you kind of get to hold on this is a thing i think the you know so going back a bit i mean like i said 
Um, you'd look for, just do some keyword searches, you'd look for conferences. You'd always find government people, the people who did these GSA schedules or had, uh, you know, lists of people who were affiliated with this county or another. And uh, I loved finding those. They were just gems. Because <laughs> even if I didn't find the right person, I could find all kinds of details about the company, um, how big they were. Um, you know, sometimes they would list very senior people as point of contacts with their personal details. Mm. They, didn't want, they didn't trust the junior person to be the point of contact. Um, and, and so I, I remember once or twice stumbling on a, a conference and going, holy cow, um, you know, this, it's all here. It's like, this is everybody here. All I had to do is look in, uh, you know, if it, what to say was a, um, the military thing. I know who the usual suspects are, but I'm interested in you, who are these smaller companies because the sub suppliers are the feeder jobs that bring in the big people for these other companies. You know, if you're working for this small technology company with 10 people, you must be really good because you're probably wearing several hats. You know, you, yeah. you, uh, you have, you have uh, a lot of, of, of opportunity if you want to go into a bigger company. And those are the people who are, um, they know they're maybe being underpaid and so forth. So um, it just worked out that I, I found a few and then it, it became a thing that is, okay, if this is the, this website is set up in this way and I look at the URL and I say, well, if this is conference number 102, what's conference 104? <laughs> oh, and and it was like sometimes it would work, and we like take you to a, a whole nother conference, and you'd be like, wait a second, this is for scuba divers. I don't need scuba divers. Change the number again, I get you know uh, toaster salesman, and it would just be so. Then it was like, okay, well, let's use Google. Let's see if we can uh, X-ray this site, find more conferences, and that led me into you know it, it kind of collecting these patterns of if this is the, uh, the company that's supplying the, the tech, um, the back end of the conference, then this is the pattern to find all the people or to find all the vendors. And, you know, so I just started collecting these patterns, not sharing them with anybody. And what I've learned and seen, unfortunately, with our technology is you don't get credit after the fact. You know, I've seen people who've shared some really cool tips. I just saw one the other day. Um, I was looking at Glenn Cathy and saw a video. He was talking about Lipple, and it was a it was a tool that by most people haven't heard of now. But four, four or five years ago, it let you find the last name of people and the and their free LinkedIn mm. profile, even though it would block you as and say this person's not in your network. This would automatically flip it, um, and it was genius. Back in my head. It, wasn't trying to do influencer marketing, but I was saying, who are these people? Who, who are these people that I need to know? Fortunate enough, I met Irina Shamaiva and ended up working for her. Through that, Jeremy Roberts got to know me and I wrote some articles for him and I wanted to impress him. I was like, I don't want to write these fluff articles about, you know, the future of, you know, where is recruiting 2.0? Social media is blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's boring. I want to do something different. I saw the people who had done something really clever. There's so many that, you know, the hacks on Facebook, those are delicious. I mean, the things about covering email patterns, that to me is like whole meal, you know, it's, they, they would just write an article and it would open up I would open you know 100 tabs trying to learn as much as I could. And a lot of times, like I said, it came from that black hat world of people that were trying to do the same thing, the salespeople and the, the, the marketing people that were trying to accomplish the same thing. They had much bigger budgets and were also working on next to nothing and trying to accomplish the same thing. So yeah, it just kind of evolved from desire to look where everyone else wasn't. And then also, yeah, just this innate nurture to say, okay, if I can find all of the people in the, in this set, I can find the, which one of these things is not like the others, but belong. You know, this is, this is a company that no one's ever heard of. It's not on anybody's radar, but they're attending events. And this person is often people who attend events are trying to get their name out there because they are looking for work. So it, it just seems like second nature to me. 
that these are people I want to be talking to. These are people that have a shared experience and I can message them kind of similar. I can do a lot of things with it. So notoriety or infamy, whatever it is, you know, I don't mind it, you know, because for me, I'm not doing anything breaks any, especially any rules. I think more than anything, I'm doing the same thing that we all do, flipping URLs, changing the, the patterns, looking for those, those pe that people data that will we, instead of looking directly in, in Google, I'm changing a couple of patterns right in the URL. And truly, that's all it takes. It's always been like, oh, you're going to download the speakers and you're going to try to headhunt the speakers. And it's like, that makes sense uh, because a lot of the times the speakers are somebody who's been around for a bit longer and they, they feel confident of actually standing on stage and talking to people who are either new in the industry or, or haven't been like, haven't been as specialized at them. But at the same time as when you see, when you start going to the same kind of conferences year after year, the people who are there as attendees are all sort of, that's the future of who's going to be talking there. So if you go after the same people as everybody else, which is the speakers, you're missing the people who have been to this event the last two or three years in a row. And they might be on the, the volunteer list. They might be helping out because they're the ones that in yeah. two, three years going to be speaking and everybody's going to want to talk to them. But if you get them now, you get some people who are already starting to be highly specialized and know what they're doing. They just haven't quite gotten to the confidence level where they feel okay with standing on stage and talking about it. I think that's one of the big things that you and I just uh, hit it off with and share, agree with wholeheartedly, that there are people that don't have the that mentor, that person. Like I said, I, I was fortunate enough to have one or two people that I really looked up to who said, you are good, you can do something. And then it was just up to me to find that thing that was unique, that was going to make me stand out from everyone else. I mean, so every time I meet somebody that I, at a conference that is there in the background and I see them taking wicked notes where they ask me a very specific question that tells me they get it. They're, they are thinking about this. They're probably asking me a question to solve something that's totally unrelated, but they, you know, they're looking at it from the perspective of how do I solve this problem? Um, again, that's why the hackathons and the challenges are incredible way to, to nurture those people who are kind of in the background and, and, and some of them choose to and other of them just need that, that mentor, that, that person to encourage them and say, you know, you, I would love to hear what you have to say. Uh, you've been, I've been seeing in the last few years just the, where SourceCon had been very North America centric, obviously with the conference now in, uh, over um, in Europe, there's so much to be heard. I mean, learning what's, what's going on in South Africa, what's going on in, in, in Asia. I, I wanna know uh, how are people using WeChat? I heard about it, you know, anecdotally, I was trying to, um, you know, use these, get into these, um, these Chinese apps um, and European You're apps. probably one of the only ones that would use a VPN to get into China rather than out. Right. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> trying to get to ten, on Tencent and, and Weibo and every, and, and logging in and translating each page <laughs> and trying to set up a company account on Weibo. Um, not easy, not easy to do. And then eventually you figure out like, yeah, you are going to have a hard time with this because yeah, you don't like you don't have to file and get your legal entity and everything in Chinese. Um, <laughs> it can be done, you know, and and also learning the nuances of Australia or or, or any other uh, any other location. I want to soak all that up because I know that there's amazing people in all of those locations. Anthony Bourdain passing away the other day. I love that show. I love the the, the people who who travel around the world and show you the, the humanized side, the, the thing that makes us the same and also makes us different, you know, and that's the special piece. And we're seeing that in this community, I think more so than ever, the, the, the minds outside of America, I think unfortunately, um, whether it's the corporate environment or it's the conditioning, <laughs> people are thought to, to think alike. Um, where I think uh, what I've seen in Europe, the people who are agile and, and move fast and think differently are rewarded. So uh, those are the startups that I'm seeing these people, you know, everybody, even from, uh, you know, Johnny Campbell saying, you know, he was had a small little agency and he said, yeah, I'm going to start doing training. Well, yeah, so everybody else, but I'm going to do it better than everyone else. And he said, I'm going to use great video and production and, um, 
you know, here, uh, Jim Stroud was the first person I saw do excellent video. Yeah. And, you know, eye-catching graphics and production quality stuff and blew my mind. You know, I, I, I've never even attempted to do that because I can't, in my mind, they've done it better than, than I could ever. So, but I think that that is, the, the, those, that's their passion. They know that that resonates with people and it gets responses. So I, I love that it's all blending together and it's also at the same time, we're expanding and learning from one another. It's no secret anymore either that that, that you are the other part of the, what's behind the channel. And, and that, um, oh, yeah. And the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's all that about? I mean, um, that was, uh, yeah, it's not because we kept the secret. It's just, uh, it's, that's kind of how it worked out. So, but what, what are some of the things that you would want to have more of in the community and that, that like we're going to try to help with the sourcing challenge? And what are some of the things that, you would want to see more of and, and that we think we, we might be able to get there. I mean, where, where I see it going now is people are wanting to know when I see the question all, asked often, you know, how do I know somebody's a good sourcer? Mm. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Same way we would do um, a developer or, or any other person. You could have them take a standardized test and it'll print out a number and it'll tell you yes or no. Um, or you can spend time with them and, you know, that paired or, whiteboard type of session where you learn and and you and you throw them a question that they don't expect and see how they respond because that's more like a real life scenario where you have a challenge and then the the, the cheese moves and you have to go um, adapt that's to me I think where we're headed is I hate to say it but unfortunately I've met some people who are well respected who are are crappy sorcerers um, I won't, I'm not going to name names for sure, but there are some people who, um, they just don't, they don't take pride in their work. They don't push the envelope. They, um, talk about things that to me again, and most people I, sh I would hope are common sense or more often than not, they, I hear suggestions about a solution without asking questions, which is to me is indicative of somebody who has, you know, uh, you know, they have a hammer and all they know is nails, you know, they, so you've got to ask the right question. What, what is the problem? What's the scope of the problem? How do we, what's the history behind the problem? Who, you know, what have you tried? What worked, what didn't? And that, that's the kind of thing that we have to be more introspective. We have to take a look at ourselves and say, can this community do better? Is there, is there a need for a test or a standard uh, approach to things? Or is it people have to have the ability to just think on their feet and communicate? I think teamwork and collaboration. In our workplace, developers were always the heads down coders. And the new approach, the fundamental approach that changed everything was going from this waterfall to this agile mindset of, no, it, it, you can help by collaborating. You can help by looking at this, uh, even if it's post-its, um, what needs to be done today? What, how are we prioritizing? And knowing that priorities are always changing. People are going to drop out of process and we're going to have to backfill that job. You never stop looking. You never stop working together so that as a team, we're getting more done and we're keeping each other honest. So those are skills that are not taught in recruitment period and they're not taught in sourcing. Again, the reliance on tools and, and technology to solve the problem where the real problem is, you know, like I said, the human get that person on the phone and tell them your story and, and listen and hear what they have to say and learn from them and, and be human. Um, you know, as Katrina would say, uh, uh, we've got to, we've got to be, um, that, that way of, of thinking, you know, the challenge is, is one that's never ending. You know, the, the, the force is with us. It happened either happened a long time ago or in the future. We, I don't even know. It blows my mind. Joseph Campbell or one of those guys would say, you know, because because the the story never ends, right? There's always a hero. There's always a a, a villain. There's always a a, 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 so a mission that needs to be solved, a challenge that seems unattainable, and what do you do about it? You know, who rises to the occasion? Who who uh, puts their head down and tries to look busy? And <laughs> I'm sick of the put their head down and tries to look busy people. They don't have a place in my world. Um, or, but, but they do, but w with my competitor. Um, <laughs> I, I want to be working with people who have the, 
the mentality that they're, um, you know, they can always learn more. They can always do better. And like I said, uh, do it as a team. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to succeed uh, or we're going to fail, but we're going to do it together. If people want to stay in touch with you and, you know, see what you continue working on, how can they best do that? I tweet still, <laughs> but usually about songs I'm listening to or really bad versions of Space Jam. I heard a terrible version of Space Jam the other day. I had to share. It was awful. Um, it, was like a, it was like a karaoke version, and it was just... <laughs> horrendous obviously linkedin if you're in the industry i'd love to to connect with you on facebook but uh don't be surprised if you see pictures of my pets or hear you know my political opinions i'm more than glad to to chat with people but i'm i'm not going to be solving your riddle you know I, I've, I've been asked hey can you find this list of every banker on earth no can you hack the mainframe and, you know, <laughs> stop the alien invasion? No, that's a movie. Stop it. And I've been prefacing some of my training by saying it's for, for educational purposes. And I don't want to get into a situation where I'm giving anybody something that they can misuse. I want people to have their own moral compass, decide what's best for them, uh, what's best for, 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 their, for their business and their partners. But... Um, you know, again, I, I, I'm seeing a lot of folks that are interested in it, want to learn how to do it themselves. And I hope to learn the, the, the mentality of how, how to solve that problem. So when it does break, like you said, the LinkedIn tricks or Facebook tricks that they, they go, okay, well, what changed? You know, is it, is it asking me now for an access key? Is it, is it, is it timing out every 30 seconds? And, you know, so how do I solve that problem? that's something that you learn. That's something that you learn from trial and error, from problem solving, and just um, a mentality that gets you to where you need to be. I'm thinking about how people would would want to learn that, and I, I hope that it's going to be something that people will appreciate and learn from, starting with, you know, again, the technology that I learned early on, and I think um, you have to start with how do websites work? What is mm. the back? Not just what is an API, but what does it look like? How do you how do you talk to a computer, and how does a computer talk back to you? Um, I think those are those are pieces that are missing in the um, equation. Um, and again, we can put some fancy user interface on it, or you can learn the way the the, the computer coders work, which is you know change the a couple lines and see what happens, and learn from that and um, experiment. But uh, I think that's something we're, uh, you know, I'm very interested in putting out there. I want to hear what people have to say about that. Um, I don't think it's being taught, period. And I think it would hopefully inspire people to to come up with the next innovation. As always, thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you for doing this, and uh, thank you for yeah being part of my team, so I can talk to you every day. I know it's it's <laughs> been it's the greatest. We're going to keep this ship going. Um, I love working with Natalie. I love working with you and Eker and the, and the other folks that. Uh, people in this industry don't know yet. We all like to keep them underground as, as we can. <laughs> Definitely been the most fun that I've had sourcing and, and doing this work. Keeps me focused and, and energized every day. So love it. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next week with a new sourcing conversation. If you want to be one of the first ones to know about new episodes, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications.